This is the first part of a lecture on the genetic regulation of longevity um, in C. elegans from 9-14-2020. And so in the first part of this lecture, I'm going to outline the C. elegans life cycle as well as talk about what dower is. And then in the second part, we're going to talk about the DEF2 pathway um, and how mutations in DEF2 can affect lifespan in C. elegans. And then in the last part, we're going to talk about what a clock gene is and how they're thought to affect longevity in C. elegans as well. So C. elegans has been used to study aging for a very long time for several reasons. One of which is that the development of C. elegans is um, very well studied and also very predictable. So after embryos are laid, C. elegans will go through four larval stages, L1, 2, 3, and L4, before becoming a reproductive adult. And that happens in about three days. And then from that point on, that reproductive adult is aging. And the total lifespan of a worm is only about 20 days, and it's usually more like 15 total days. And so you can have reproductive adults in three days. You can complete your whole aging experiment in less than three weeks, right? And that is a time scale that we can actually work with in terms of studying aging. And one other thing that's nice about C. elegans for studying aging is that they have a relatively few or a small number of cells. Adult C. elegans hermaphrodites have about 959 cells, 1,000 cells. And the lineage of these cells is mapped, meaning that the cells in the embryo have been traced throughout the course of development, and you actually know which cells in the reproductive adult come from which cells in the embryo. And this is also completely predictable, which is awesome. Um, additionally, the cells of reproductive adults are what are known as post-mitotic, which means once this C. elegans worm reaches reproductive adulthood, its cells will not divide anymore, right? And so from that point on, not only is the animal aging, but every single cell is also aging and no longer dividing, which means you can study organismal aging as a whole, as well as cellular aging. Um, in a live organism that's transparent. And so there are some really big advantages to using C. elegans to study not only aging in organisms, but also aging at the cellular and genetic level. And one interesting thing about C. elegans that's going to come into play when we talk about the genetics of longevity is this alternative developmental pathway that sometimes the C. elegans can enter called dower. And so as an embryo develops and makes the decision to either enter into L2 from L1 or go into dower, it will sense the environment. And if the conditions are good and there's a lot of food, there's not that many worms, everything is looking good, that L1 larvae will enter normal reproductive development and become an L2. However, if there's limited food availability as sensed by the worm, um, if there's a lot of other worms around, if there's a very high temperature, or a lot of stressful um, things in the environment, this L1 worm can actually make the decision to enter into this alternative developmental program called dower. And what's interesting about dowers is they're highly resistant to stress, um, and this is different types of stress, so very high heat they're resistant to, they're resistant to very high levels of um, detergents and chemicals and oxidants. They're highly resistant to UV radiation and they can stay as dowers and survive in this stage for several months. And during that period, they're no longer developing further. They're kind of in this suspended animation state where they remain dower. They no longer, they're not developing in any way. They're kind of just stuck, right? And they're stuck in this highly stress resistant state but when conditions turn around and food becomes available or the population decreases or the temperature becomes more favorable for them, dowers can actually enter back into the reproductive life cycle of development and become L4 larvae. And what's also interesting about this is that if you looked at an L4 larvae 
that had undergone reproductive development through L2 and L3, you would not be able to tell it apart from one that was a dower 13 hours before. So dower does not seem to have any lasting physical effects that are, uh, that are observable. However, it might actually have some lasting metabolic and physiological and genetic effects. Um, and people are still studying the effects of going through dower and how it can affect reproductive adults later in life because it seems to confer some kind of um, enhanced stress resistance responses later in life, but it's still not well understood how that is. But ultimately, they don't look different once they come out of dower. But they do look different, and they are physiologically distinct from L2s and L3s when they're in that dower state. And so, under favorable conditions, you can see the worms here progressing through four larval stages and then ultimately becoming reproductive adults. And then at that L1 decision time point, if the environment is unfavorable, they can become dowers, which you can see down here, and then exit out into L4. And dowers look different, right? So they're longer and they're thinner than uh, normal larvae of the same age. They have a thicker cuticle on the outside, which is one of the things that makes them more resistant to those stresses. They also close their mouth or their mouth cavity. They don't eat during this time. They stop grinding their food in their pharynx. And um, in order to withstand the non-eating, they increase their fat storage, as well as levels of antioxidants, which can help prevent formation of free radicals. Additionally, in terms of changes genetically, um, dower larvae increase their expression of those molecular chaperones. And if you remember, molecular chaperones are there to um, enhance protein folding and also stop proteins from misfolding. And so in exposure to high stress, proteins might misfold. And so dowers, one of the ways that they become resistant to the stress is by having a shit ton of chaperones around to keep those proteins um, intact and functional. Uh, dowers are also able to decrease their metabolism, right, which is good because they're not eating. <laughs> um, and they decrease uh, their protein synthesis, um, which is a pretty um, resource intense process, right? And so they sort of turn down these physiological activities in order to withstand the stress over a long period of time. 